Hey guys, Budget Jedi here with uh, another diorama attempt. This time, you're looking at my G.I. Joe ninja figures. Uh, I've been buying up these uh, G.I. Joe retaliation um, ninja figures because not only are they fun to play with, but also with the G.I. Joe line, they always come with tons of cool accessories. Now, I actually am not usually a G.I. Joe collector. These are pretty much the first um, G.I. Joe figures I've owned. Um, and they're really fun to play with and they have lots of nice details. Actually, I also have a couple of these samurai figures So naturally I want to make a display for them and I'm thinking of making a, a dojo diorama for my ninja figures For this diorama I wanted to find some bamboo and wood elements because that's how I picture uh, a Japanese or a ninja diorama I went to the local discount store, Christmas Tree Shops, and picked up a few of these bamboo placemats. These are uh, bamboo placemats. I was looking for the brown ones. I couldn't find any, but I got some red ones, which uh, look really good anyway. And uh, here, here's some really awesome uh, wood placemats or, you know, dinner mats here. And uh, these were even cheaper. These were 69 cents each. And here's some wood items that I think might be useful. Uh, the, these are coffee stirs. You can get these at any fast food chain places or uh, coffee shops. So I picked this up uh, for free at my local <laughs> fast food chain. I also have saved some uh, these uh, plastic clips from uh, some toy that I opened up over Christmas. And just in case, I also picked up uh, a craft sticks. These are a dollar a pack. You can get them at any dollar store. So I happen to have a box here that happens to be just the right size for my uh, placemat. And uh, what I'm going to do is use this placemat as the floor of the dojo. I'm going to cut off the remaining sides and flaps. Here's another look at the box after I've cut off the flaps and extra materials I don't need. And this placemat can be glued right in the bottom here as the floor. I've also spray painted two pieces of cardboard as well as some of the coffee stirs because these will make the wooden <laughs> ribs to my diorama. So I'm gonna put these on the corners and these coffee stirs, they're just black on one side, are gonna be the ribs here. I'm just literally gonna stick them to make the ribs. Next, to work on the walls, I'm going to use obviously simple white paper because uh, in my imagination all dojos are usually made with paper type walls. Here I've glued on some of the coffee stirs on the sides and I realized I have an extra table mat here so I'm going to cut a little piece. I can use that as a nice trim for the side of the room. I actually found this old box from Ikea and uh, what I'm going to do is use it as the base or as the bottom of this uh, dojo. I'm going to cut it right in half and put one in the front put one in the back there. That's I'm trying not to let anything go to waste so I'm taking some of the leftovers from the table mat and roll it up into small accessories for my dojo diorama. I also found a spool of twine here that I can use to add to my accessories. And here's a little bit of fun with the coffee stirs and craft sticks. Just by gluing them together, I can make my own little ninja target practice. And here's the plastic pieces that I found from a toy uh, from Christmas. And I'm using it as sort of a weapon station that I can put inside the dojo. Alright, I found some uh, leftover red cloth here. And uh, I'm going to use some electrical tape to make some symbols on it. And this will be a really cool addition to my dojo. Now I want to make some pillars for my dojo. I took this paper towel roll and I painted it in black and cut it in half to make smaller sort of pillars that I can uh, surround with twine. Just as an added bonus, I printed some dojo mumbo jumbo here and took a couple of these loose bamboo strips, glued it onto the piece of paper and I have kind of a makeshift uh, dojo scroll. I wanted to put an extra area here where I can add some more action figures and in order to do that I'm gonna add a little bit more cardboard. I got myself a piece of priority mail cardboard here, uh, they're pretty strong and I actually uh, 
spray painted a part of it white and I'm simply going to just stick it on the bottom this is my diorama upside down I'm gonna stick it right there all right now that I got that outside area stuck to the diorama I'm finally gonna use this other placemat to cover up the outside of the diorama simply by using glue and tape and actually I'm gonna even stick it to this part of the diorama using this great stuff left over that will harden and keep this in place now I'm trying to make the outside area of the dojo look more realistic I'm going to put down some spackling to make it look like either like snow or white sand alright guys that's pretty much it in terms of doing work for my dojo um, everything stuck really well um, just like a lot of my dioramas I like everything to be one whole piece and easy to move around but uh, let's not waste any more time and put some figures in here and see what that looks like there it is my ninja dojo and pretty much all my ninja figures <laughs> pretty happy with the, the way it came out uh, the wood placemat really helped out uh, for the perimeter area as you noticed I cut off a part of uh, the top to make it look more like a fence it, uh, made it look better and the spackling that was supposed to be like snow uh, didn't look half bad didn't really want to work too much at it but I'm really happy with this front area here because I can fit a whole bunch of uh, ninja activities here <laughs> especially using my props um, thank God I found that string that I can make into little pieces of rope and whatnot. Uh, here's a ninja that's climbing over the fence. Apparently, one made it already. <laughs> so, yeah, that looks pretty good. Uh, what took a lot of time were these props, actually, um, that enhanced this middle dojo room. And uh, it really helps. Little props do help. I've got uh, Black vs. Red Ninja with Kim Arashikage watching there. And uh, some sticks over here and some made up scrolls on the side. That's the thing about G.I. Joe figures is they have lots of accessories. And uh, it really helps a diorama. Here's a table that I made from craft sticks and uh, coffee stirs for the weapons. That Budo Samurai looks really like a prop when you put it in the back with his mask on and there's my weapon holder so overall that adds up to the uh, allure of you know or the, the image of the dojo now this isn't really a big diorama can't fit a huge number of figures and that's not a problem because for displays like this for example with blind master teaching um, I like displaying my figures a few at a time. I always say this, but I use dioramas to enhance the look of my figure or the story instead of the diorama itself being the centerpiece. Here's Blind Master teaching his disciples how to fight without looking. <laughs> um, you know, this diorama is good for a general ninja diorama doesn't need to be specifically G.I. Joe related and uh, I can definitely use this diorama to display my samurai figures I wish I had more of those samurai figures they're awesome I need to mention uh, SMU Toys and Daddy Ivo on YouTube for getting me into these ninja figures they are long long time G.I. Joe fans and they finally got me into it with the uh, retaliation line. Like I said before, they're really detailed and come with so many accessories, making it so fun to play with. And uh, of course, being in 4-inch scale, they work with other figures such as Marvel Universe. Always fun to play with. Such as Wolverine, always getting in trouble, especially when he's in Japan. <laughs> anyway, I uh, really appreciate you guys... Uh, coming along for the geek out today I hope you enjoyed the video I appreciate you watching of course and uh, I will see you guys on the next one